Okay, today I'm talking about five of the most popular ladies targeted or feminine targeted fragrances from the house of Mugler. Designer house, which recently got acquired by L'Oreal. But today in this video, I'm ranking five of the, uh, at least I think these are the most popular uh, fragrances for ladies from Mugler, which includes Aura, Womanity, Angel, Angel Muse, and also Alien. So if you want to find out about these fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Small and Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, you guys have been asking me to do more videos on ladies or feminine targeted fragrances. And today I'm taking on one of my favorite designer houses, which recently got uh, switched from Claren's Group to L'Oreal. And I wanted to you know, highlight some of the fragrances. Even though a few of them are not really my favorites, well, I shouldn't take that back. They're all really pleasant fragrances with a few of them being really, really good. And some are just okay for me. And I'll tell you about them and I'll tell you the ranking in a little bit, but before we do that, if this is your first time tuning into this channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So the very first time I heard about Mugler, the house of Mugler, was uh, before their fragrances were even out. I was a fan of uh, following fashion designers and I used to always uh, look and see what uh, designers were doing. So I knew about uh, Terry Mugler from quite some time ago, and uh, but I discovered Angel for the first time around 1995, uh, three years after it was launched. So that was my very first experience with any fragrances from Mugler. Three years later, I discovered Angel Men, which later became Amen. So that was the beginnings of uh, my um, interest in this house. And I think the way I discovered Angel was uh, I worked for Photo Labs while I was going to art, art school, film school, and in that lab, or in those labs, I worked at a few different ones here in San Francisco. Ladies would be wearing this angel fragrance, and uh, they'd come in and uh, you know get their film processed, and of course, I would smell how great angel smelled. So that was my very first experiences with angel. I really always have loved it, and uh, it's been around since 1992. I feel like it's a groundbreaking fragrance, and uh, you know, so many fragrances came after that. So today, uh, I'm going to rank them for you, and we're going to start with number five, and I'll tell you more stories about these fragrances moving on. But number five, for me, in the most popular ladies' fragrances for uh, a woman from the house of Mugler, is Aura, this one right here. This is a very strange fragrance to me. It's a different fragrance for me. Um, I feel like a lot of the fragrances that Mugler came out with uh, after Angel, um, Angel became that groundbreaking release and I think Feel like they've been trying to come up with another angel every time. It hasn't worked all the time. I don't know, has it? Do you guys know if it has? Let me know if you uh, can answer this question. A few of them have worked, a few of them have not. I think this one is a kind of a love it or hate it kind of fragrance for me. When you smell it out of the bottle, it smells really like synthetic and uh, not very pleasant. But when you start wearing it and start appreciating it, I feel like it's pleasant enough to appreciate, but uh, it's different. This launched in 2017. This is a oriental fragrance. Now, I would call it an oriental green or oriental fruity because it has fruity elements and it has, you know, greenish touches. Um, the thing I'm wondering about it is this fragrance features multiple perfumers. So, in the end, why did they have to go to Daphne Bouget, Amandine Clerc Marie, Christophe Reynaud, Marie Salamagna to create one fragrance. Uh, did they make a mess out of the fragrance or did they create something uh, amazing? What are your thoughts about this? Um, first of all, when it was first announced, I was like, this bottle is gorgeous. It kind of reminds me of uh, Alexander McQueen's Kingdom bottle. Kind of, not a lot. Uh, that one was a, a, a reddish uh, bottle with mostly silver on one side and uh, a glass on the other where you could see like a heart. This is shaped like a heart, but it's obviously green uh, because it has these greenish touches. But what the notes are here are rhubarb, vanilla, green notes, orange blossom, woody notes, 
amber wood, ilang ilang, sandalwood, bergamot, pear, tonka. I guess I would also go to the extent of calling this an oriental floral because it's quite floral. So oriental fruity, fruity floral, oriental fr fruity floral, all of those come to mind with this one. But for me, it smells medicinal synthetic almost. Like when you first put it on or when you first smell it out of the bottle or on a strip, it's different. It's a different smell. It doesn't smell... Uh, Groundbreaking is another word to say because Angel, I thought, was always a really, really groundbreaking fragrance when it was first, uh, you know, um, getting its or gaining its popularity because I don't think it was a success right away. Um, and this one is just weird. Uh, but as I said, it does open up on me. It gets vanillic and it gets ultra sweet. It's a sweet fragrance. And those of you that are not into sweet fragrances might not enjoy this one. But I feel like there's a, a fruity touch from the rhubarb, slightly jelly-like gelatinous kind of a quality wrapped around all the oriental notes and the green notes uh, with, you know, the, the vanilla and um, various floral touches. I guess... Uh, I feel like it's not a mature fragrance either. It's very, uh, it feels young to me. It doesn't feel mature at all. Even from the uh, ad campaign, uh, the actual, uh, the, the spokesperson in the, the photos looks very, very young. So I feel like this is a very, very young fragrance. They're targeting, uh, you know, a young um, audience. I don't know, that's my um, thoughts on this fragrance. I, you guys can totally have a different uh, idea or thoughts on this one but for me it seems very young it seems more playful again I think what they're trying to do is create the next angel which I don't think they've had success with I feel like out of the all the fragrances and I'm talking about five today I feel like Alien came really close to being a success as Angel did. I don't think it's as successful as Angel, but I'm not even sure. I'm not. I'm, I don't. I don't study the the numbers and things like that. But I feel like this was not much of a success. So today, again, this is the EDP version of Mugler's Aura, and that's my number five favorite out of all of them. And you might rank this completely different. If you are a fan of this, let me know. Let me know also what you like about it and also have you compared it to the EDT? Because I've never really compared it to the EDT. I've always been uh, uh, smelling the EDP. So I'm wondering if EDT is a little better. If you guys know, let me know. Put a comment down. But let me know if you're a fan again, as I said, and this is Mugler Aura at number five. So a few of you had asked me to uh, pick up this fragrance because I love the fig note and uh, I really, really do appreciate figs and fragrances. And I decided to get it because I had never seen this fragrance anywhere um, and I never really, um, uh, you know, smelled it because I never experienced it. So I did a blind buy and I picked up Womanity from Mugler, this one right here. So this came out in 2010. And this one, um, for me, I would call this a fruity aquatic. Uh, other than that, I don't think I can call it anything else. Fruity floral. Uh, I don't think it just has floral notes. It's just it's mostly greenish fig uh, woody kind of aquatic. That's what I would go with this one. Launched in 2010. I'm not sure how successful this this was or became uh, for Mugler, but I think this is a controversial fragrance. I don't think there's a. It's polarizing, is what I should say. So the perfumers. There's two two perfumers, but I looked at a few databases. One database said. Uh, Two perfumers and another database said um, one perfumer so I'm not 100% sure which one is correct but one database says Alexis Dadier and Ralph Schweiger and another one says Fabrice Pellegrin if you guys are 100% certain let me know the Mugler website does not say who the perfumer is some of the other fragrances the Mugler website does say like Angel and um, Angel Muse and Alien and they do highlight the perfumers but not for this one anyway so this is uh, the the notes of fig fruit caviar fig tree fig leaf so it's an aquatic experience so the caviar note and the fig from what i read on mugler they're accords the fig fruit and the caviar are accords that they've created with uh different notes so basically we're smelling a fragrance made with accords to smell like figs and smell like caviar or aquatic or marine notes but it's a strange fragrance in a way that i enjoy it more than aura uh because uh, it's also not all not ultra feminine. A, a lot of these fragrances uh, for Mugler, I feel like they're kind of like gender bending. Not a lot in a hundred percent in all of them, but this definitely. It's an aquatic fragrance, and generally, I don't see aquatic fragrances for 
the ladies from designers so that's one thing and then it's also fig and fig is a you know a f fruity fig or a green leafy fig or a fig or the tree uh, all very kind of unisex slightly masculine eating fragrances so this one I feel like is a very very unisex and it's very very aquatic it's a strange fragrance in a way that I love it and I kind of hate it so I can see the polarizing aspect of this fragrance it's different um, I enjoy it and I don't enjoy it kind of like I have to be in a mood to go okay I want to smell uh, marine or aquatic or fishy notes mixed in with my one of my favorite fruity notes of fig and, and of course green leafy notes of uh, fig leaf and fig tree so it's basically what I get. Um, sometimes when I'm wearing it, I feel like um, the 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 aquatic parts are really amped up. Something triggers off of me, my chemistry, uh, and just it amplifies the aquatic touches, which I don't like. And then other times, the fig fruit and the fig leaves uh, with the tree are stronger, which I can really, really appreciate. So it's a kind of a chameleon-esque fragrance, although that pretty much happens with a lot of different fragrances. But for me, I feel like it becomes more of a chameleon when the aquatic touches get amplified more than what I know the fragrance to be. Anyway, this is Womanity. I don't know if you are men out there. Have you tried it? And probably the, the, the name Womanity might turn you off, but I feel like this one's uh, definitely on the unisex side. Um, definitely right down the middle uh, for you to try. Again, the bottle is a bit on the feminine side. I don't like this dangly thing. It makes a lot of noise. There's some unique, interesting things about uh, the bottle. And, uh, you know, I, I like it. I don't love it. That's why it's at number four. And it beat out Aura because, you know, this one smells very synthetic to me. This one at least it doesn't smell ultra synthetic. That's Womanity at number four. So now that we've got five and four out of the way, uh, my least favorites of the fragrances from uh, this house for the ladies. Number three and number two were a toss up. So in the end, I ended up putting Alien at number three. So Mugler Alien is an oriental floral eau de parfum concentration launched in 2005. So uh, this features the notes of uh, jasmine sambac or sambac jasmine, ambergris, and then also cashmere. And so those are the only three notes that they list. So for me, this is a very, very bright, almost like a neon kind of a jasmine uh, I get with this one. It reminds me of... Uh, fluorescent colors from the 80s for some odd reason this particular fragrance um, it's interesting it's a great scent uh, it's very very white it's white lots of white flowers it's definitely ambery from the ambergris but it's a different kind of amber amber as we discussed in a, a week or so ago ambergris and amber are different and from my reading on M Mugler's website this one is a uh, it's not real ambergris it's ambergris accord is what he's done so these perfumers know how to create these smells and they're using you know different notes to create these uh, smells so even though it says ambergris it's an accord uh, created so it is ambery in the end it's lots of flowery touches the cashmere is very very woody and musky as well and you know it's sweet it's a sweet fragrance again it's got the similar sweetness of uh, this one but I much prefer uh, Alien over Aura, um, even though the bottle here for Aura is much beautiful. Well, they're both beautiful bottles, but uh, I much prefer the um, the sweetness of this one compared to this one. They're both sweet, but this one doesn't list any vanilla. I feel like it's in there. It definitely has a vanilla combo of jasmine sandback with uh, you know the vanilla, obviously. I mean, uh, created by Dominic Ropion, and then also uh, I guess Laurent Briere, I think is he worked with him. But I feel like Dominic Ropion is a, an excellent perfumer, and he's created so many masterpieces. And I feel like this one actually was a fairly success, successful, not as successful as Angel, but I feel like it's 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 up there. That's why this has multiple flankers, so many different flankers. In fact, I might even have it. I did recently buy. Um, the um, Mirage, the flanker Mirage. I'm not going to show it to you today, but the Mirage flanker for this is amazing. Actually, that the it's a great fresh, slightly aquatic leaning white flower, uh, different than this, but still hints at this, and it's a great flanker. So there are multiple flankers for Alien. I feel like it's a very very popular uh, fragrance, and it's so popular that they made the men's uh, collection Alien Men as well. So anyway. Alien for women uh, from Mugler is number three. And one thing I want to mention, a lot of these bottles, um, I didn't mention this at the beginning, I've mentioned it in other videos, but Terry Mugler was obsessed with science fiction.
fiction and comic books and a lot of uh, uh, the stuff, the imagery and the bottles and things like that are all very uh, sci-fi uh, comic book uh, inspirations. So as you can see, this one reminds me of a spaceship flying like that. Anyway, very, very futuristic looking bottles uh, as you can see. So anyway, that's Alien at number three. Again, it was a toss up between the next one, but the next one is Angel Muse, this one right here. So Angel Muse is at number two, and I'm, sur I'm sure you can figure out what number one is. And even though this has got the name Angel in it, I made it its own separate fragrance because it is a separate fragrance. It's also created by a different perfumer. Launched in 2016, it's considered an oriental. Notes of patchouli, hazelnut cream, vetiver, pink, uh, pink peppercorn grapefruit. Uh, those are the notes in here. And this is created by Quintan Biche. Now, and when you smell it, you do pick up kind of like a, a DNA of angel, but it stops there because it goes in a different direction. And I think also patchouli is here. And patchouli is also prominent in uh, angel. So kind of why I like these two, uh, this one, and the next one obviously is Angel. Uh, kind of the reason why I like these two fragrances. They are different, but they are similar, and kind of uh, focusing on the same DNA of, uh, a hint of the same DNA of the original Angel. But this one is very creamy with the hazelnut cream, and also the vetiver is pretty prominent here. So you get the patchouli, the hazelnut cream, it's a gourmand, it's cozy, it's comforting. The vetiver kind of goes slightly masculine, it's earthy, it's uh, grassy, it's woody then spice uh, some spices from pink peppercorn and some grapefruit it's a it's a winner it's a winner of a fragrance um, very very delicious very very comforting and also it's not necessarily it is feminine but it's not necessarily like ultra feminine where a man would not be able to wear it because I feel like if they took this fragrance and they put it in a niche bottle uh, from a niche brand and they, they titled it unisex, I'm sure men would be wearing it because it is in this bottle and it's kind of on the feminine and it's targeted to ladies and the ad campaign shows a lady, then I think men would shy away from it. Does that make sense to you guys? Because this is this is very, very close to being a uh, unisex fragrance for me and it's a delicious fragrance. I love it and I love that the fact that they did this. Um, they've had multiple flankers of Angel um, and this one, I don't know if I would call it a straight flanker it's an inspiration or it's a different version a different version usually means it's a flanker but i don't know there's a I think there's a, one more f uh, version of this one, which is the Eau de Toilette, and I don't think there's any other versions. So in, in the end, it's a great scent. I love it. That's why it's at number two. I wear it. I really enjoy it. In fact, I've given it to some relatives. I've given it bottles to my mom. Um, she loves it, although she pr prefers Angel uh, as her favorite, but she still thinks this is great. Anyway, Angel Muse at number two. Let me know if you're a fan of this one. Let me know if you're a fan of the other one. Now. I want to mention that these two are ultra sweet. I don't get the sweetness from um, the other fragrances as much. Um, Womanity is sweet, but not very sweet. One thing I forgot to mention about this one, this is a sweet and savory. So you've got that aquatic marine touch with the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the um, caviar in here. And caviar is salty. I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever eaten uh, caviar. And so that's why you get that savory with the sweetness of the fig fruit. Um, so I feel like that's the least sweet, uh, then followed by Angel Muse, then followed by Angel, which is my number one. Uh, and then of course, these two are pretty equally sweet, but this one's sweeter, so this would be number four. For sweetness. And at number one, it is Angel from Mugler. This is the fragrance that really did it for me. The smell was just intoxicating. The patchouli, the dark chocolate, the caramel, the honey, the vanilla, the cotton candy, which is the inspiration. The cotton candy is definitely the inspiration for this fragrance. I guess Terry Mugler used to go to fun fairs or fairs and they, he would um, get cotton candy and I guess caramelized peanuts or something and something like that and he would eat them and uh, he really enjoyed it and he wanted to recreate the smell of those fun fair or carnival kind of a smell and it totally makes sense to me because of all the notes in here and this has one of the most amazing sillages and trails I'm you know the trail that um, when the ladies wore it and that's kind of why I was so into this fragrance because my nose would be so used to uh, developing chemicals for photos and then this this smell would walk into the 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 office and then i would smell it i'm like wow what is that smell and it's just not once 
all the ladies were wearing this in the mid 90s uh, in San Francisco. I would just smell it everywhere. And then by the time the late 90s rolled around, I just smelled it everywhere and I think people got tired of it. Uh, but I still love the smell. I just love it because on me, it's it smells great. I, I, you know, it's sparkliness of the patchouli, the effervescent qualities, the, the chocolatey touches, the caramelly touches, all of it is amazing. But this was in 92, launched in 92, and I don't think it was successful when it was first first launched, but I think it took about three years, and then I started smelling it everywhere. And, and then, uh, you know, amazing that they kept it. And, you know, I feel like Mugler doesn't discontinue quickly. The flankers might be discontinued, but the original fragrances are still kept, I think. Um, there are limited edition versions that do come out as well. So Angel is a great, great fragrance created by Olivier Cresp. He, do, he does have his own perfume line now. Um, it's called Acro. Um, but he's he's created some masterpieces out there, and this is definitely one of them. It's a groundbreaking fragrance, probably the ver very first gourmand fragrance, and I could see why. I mean, it's 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 a great scent. It smells great. It lasts a long time. It's patchouli. It's a gourmand sweet notes. Uh, a great great wearing experience, and that's why it's at number one. So that is Angel at number one, and that is my ranking of the ladies' fragrances from Mugler. And guess what? Tomorrow I'm putting out a video on the men's fragrances. It's a top. 20 so please uh, stick around for that video but let me know your thoughts on these fragrances uh, do you like them are you a fan I've never really spoken about uh, womanity uh, and uh, I, I blind bought it and I'm still challenged with it what are your thoughts with this fragrance I've spoken a lot about the other ones uh, just want to also uh, specify in here for this particular fragrance I have a full review of the alien oud magisto also created by Dominic Ropion so it's alien basically with oud. Uh, I don't know if you've sampled it, but let me know. I have a review. You can go catch that. Um, there is also a musk version of it, and I've never really worn that one. I need to pick that one up because I enjoy musk in fragrances. I'm not sure how uh, they would do it with uh, the uh, alien DNA, if that makes sense. So the alien oud definitely even goes more masculine because this is uh, not necessarily ultra masculine, but it has unisex qualities. But when you when you add the oud to it, it does go a little more unisex. Anyway, um, check that out as well. And uh, I do have a review of uh, Angel Muse as well. You can check that out as well. And of course, I have a top 20 Mugler fragrances, both men and women and unisex. And as I said, tomorrow, stick around for all the men's releases ranked for a top 20. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.